What is up my dudes and welcome to today's video. I'm going to be discussing art and my feelings towards getting schooling and certain artists in the community and a few of the not real helpful things that are going on as well. Um, I'm going to be going over previous works that I've done and also some new stuff so I hope that you'll stick around. You might learn something. So what I want to start off with is I have a list here of everything that I want to talk about. It's just some of the unhealthy things that I've seen in the art community. One of which is being boxed in to certain styles and certain things that you have to do in order to become an artist and everything. And like the main ones that I've been seeing is, you know, follow these tutorials and you know, th this is how you do it. It's the same way in the beauty community too, on where you see those stupid trends where it's like, no, this is the way to do it. And this is old school or this isn't good enough or whatever, right? You know, it's, it's the same thing with art. I see that with a lot of going with, you know, the attention span that most people have today. Uh, with like TikToks and reels and stuff like that, you know, and even YouTube shorts do it, does it sometimes. And it kind of falls into like the five minute crafts category where they do this like real simple design and yet that's a correct way of doing art. And if you do anything other than that, you're not, you're not an artist or you're not doing it correctly or whatever. My biggest pet peeve with that is art isn't defined by doing the style of another artist. And this kind of falls into finding your style and stuff because like a lot of us we get so stuck on going in and trying to find reference material that it ends up taking away from the process of what we're doing and I'm notorious for that still to this day even though I have a style that I have created after pulling myself away from trying to find a style and just drawing and I'll get more into that later or in a longer video if you guys want to see that but like overall we get so stuck on comparison like we get so stuck comparing ourselves to other artists and gauging our progress on what somebody else has done and it's like you can't really do that because if you're a beginner and you're looking at magic the gathering concept art that was a big one for me you will not be that like right off the bat you can get closer to it but you're still not going to be that artist you know what i mean and even concept artists in general all have different styles and, and you can see it throughout their stuff, you know, they may be gauging it off of, you know, kind of what was already done or, or what the client had asked them to do, but like overall, it's, it's still unique. And trying to recreate somebody else's art is, I think, really unhealthy. It's fine if you're trying to learn certain things, like you're, you're trying to learn perspective or, you know, you, you really like the form of colors that somebody uses in a piece that's a whole that's a whole thing in itself actually because that's a whole other toxic community <laughs> issue that we're having but like the biggest thing is, is what was the point i was making before I <laughs> when you're trying to just essentially recreate somebody's style you're never going to find your own and you're also never going to be good enough in your own eyes and the thing is and i had to i had to come across this and i'm 27 years old okay going on 28 now and I finally just got to the point where I can look at my art and even though it's not good enough to me on certain things, I can officially look at it and be like, you know what? Somebody's going to be inspired by that. Somebody's going to look at the progress that I've made in my art and whatnot and thank God because he's the only reason that I've been able to actually develop it and get it to where I'm at a healthy spot with it instead of how toxic that it used to be and this is what I mean but I, I can now look at it and know that to somebody else that's gonna be their goal and I think that is what's truly inspiring because when we sit so much in ourselves and like most of my childhood right I have drawn numerous things from a very young age I think I was about three when I started drawing and and creating art and stuff that everything's better when you're a kid, right? Every Everything's great when you're a kid, but then you hit your teen years and you're trying to build something off of it for whatever the reason. You know, you, th you think it's a good idea or, you know, you want to make a career out of it. No, I never wanted that. I wanted to be a comic artist or a, a, a manga honest, nope, a manga artist. And 
So what I did was probably the worst decision of my life. I ended up learning anime style. And the problem with that style, no matter what anybody says, is that most of it all looks the same. And it's grouped up in categories that all share the exact same features and the exact same styles. And that's why people are so drawn to it. That's gonna give me a lot of hate, but I don't care. I think it's true. But like my, my whole thing with it is it's, it's not bad styles, whatever. If you want to do that, that's fine. If you want to learn how to do, you know, art like thousands of concept artists, you know, go right ahead. If you want to learn how to do, you know, be the next Bob Ross, freaking go for it. I don't care. You, you do you. But my thing is, is I don't think that we should be guilt tripped or told that we have to have a certain art style. And I get so annoyed with that because like the biggest thing, and here's the reason I think personally on why most people get boxed into where you have to reduce yourself to be like other artists is that when you're doing like commission work and stuff like that, most of the time there's, there's sometimes where your clients will want you to do it in a style of a different artist but instead of paying them or they didn't have their commissions open so they're like yeah I want something that looks like this and they show you reference pictures of that other person's work and then with others it's like they notice that they're not getting as much sales unless they do a certain style and I see that a lot on DeviantArt back before it was just a furry site and with um, like a whole bunch of other ones right you could even say the same with like ArtStation because concept artists and basically like anime styled concept artists or whatever are the ones that seem to get the most sales. But yeah, I don't know. Because like my whole thing is is that I feel like, I don't know, it's just, that's the whole thing. And I feel like with commissions, I think the <laughs> commissions themselves, it it's such a, it's such a hit or a miss, right? So I mean, you can have your plus of, you know, you're getting paid. If you don't mind drawing for other people, that's great. Or if you're going through an art block, that's kind of helpful sometimes, I would say, because like if somebody gives you a really good concept to go off of, you know, and it, it at least kind of inspires you, it can kind of help break that and get you back into a momentum of being able to create stuff. But at the same time, it can also get you to stop thinking about your own stuff and only focus on what other people want you to make. And to me, like with the commissions that I've done, I don't, I don't hate them because I make them to where it's acceptable in my opinion, but they could always be more, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm making it exactly what the person wanted and it will never be as much as what I want. So I, I but I don't like, unless I'm asked to, I will not add anything extra to that piece. And I just save it for my own original work because I don't want to overdo it for the people that are paying me for the commission that didn't ask for it. Um, or it's not going to be in the exact way that they wanted. Now, luckily with most of them, I've been asked to do whatever I want with it. But again, it's, it's, I don't know. I just, I have a whole thing with it and it's like, I, I would rather just save it for my own and give you exactly what you asked for because I know you're not going to be expecting more with it. It'll be good enough for you. But like, I am not a fan of my commissions and it doesn't, it doesn't give me the sense of creativity that I need in order to go and do my own thing with it. It just stops it to where I am now stuck in a rut because I, well, I did that, you know, and I'm kind of bored now or whatever. So like, I am not a commission person and I never will be. And I think that's also with the fact that I have my own style now that I don't want to that's what I mean. Like with some people, they will specifically ask for a certain type of style and it's like, I'm not that kind of artist. You're going to have to go and actually contact that artist for them to do that. So don't come, which I think just in general, if you're going to commission stuff, do not ask an artist to be like another artist. It's just rude. <laughs> just You went to them specifically wanting something and because you had a vision that you couldn't put down on paper, don't make them be somebody else. You know what I mean? Um, unless they have blatantly made it obvious that they will be, you know what I mean? Like I, you know, go in and you're like, I want a studio Ghibli style, you know, and they're cool with it because you know, you see that kind of style 
or, you know, they talk about how much they love that movie or they love that style and whatever, you know, so you know that they would at least have enjoyment out of it, then okay. But just any random Joe, not really, you know what I mean? And I also think that more people should, like, I understand that, you know, most people go to artists because they can't create stuff, but at the same time, it's really not that freaking hard to learn. I will never think that it's that hard to learn. I don't even remember what I was saying. Um, I kind of blanked out on that one. Uh, so, whatever. <laughs> the other toxic thing that I'm gonna talk about it re revolves around tracing and stealing concepts and the difference between getting inspiration and just blatant copying. And I guess this also goes with the color theory thing because one of the other annoying things that I've seen is I was watching this, uh, it was like a partial documentary thing, not really a documentary, but they were doing a video on how this one specific artist uh, was trying to like copyright the idea of the certain color scheme and it's just like freaking pastel colors. And this other artist was really inspired and wanted to create her own, but she loved the color scheme, so she she tweaked it and made it her own. And they got into this whole thing, and it was like really, really un- it was not handled correctly at all. And became this whole thing because she was literally trying to like take the idea that it, you know, no, I own this color scheme, you can't have it, and you're copying my style and everything. So you know, we're behaving like teenagers, even though we're freaking adults on the internet, right? And that kind of mentality is horrible because like if somebody's inspired by your colors, I'm not gonna look at somebody and be like, oh, you made neon art. Oh, you're scum. How dare you take my color scheme and whatever. Like, I don't care. It's more fun to s fun stuff to look at. You know, if I draw it, obviously I like that color scheme. So if somebody else is using that color scheme, it's just more stuff that's gonna catch my eye that I like. I don't see that as an issue. You know what I mean? It's when they're like full on ripping the concepts, ripping the entire image itself, just full on stealing it or tracing it and changing it out like it's a freaking art doll. You know, stuff like that I think is when you have the right to uh, go after them on art theft and whatever. But like tracing because you're trying to learn how they do their shapes or learn that particular style because you know you really like it and you'd love to have something like it um i don't i don't see an issue with it that's how i learned how to do anime i traced images and then i started drawing it on my own and now that's not really the most difficult one to learn how to do and like most really really high-end art isn't going to be easy to trace but you can still steal the concepts and stuff for but like i mean if you're going to do that at least in the very at the very least, mention who your reference is. Like, just be kind, man. You know, you're like, yeah, you know what? I copied so-and-so because I just wanted to see how they did it and see if I could make it in my own style and whatever, you know, and you can be like, it's inspired by so-and-so or I took the concept of so-and-so's art and I recreated it in my style because I'm trying stuff out. People will have respect for you because you're not blatantly ripping them off. But when you go and you like pretty much just full on rip the image or you change certain little things about it but it's not enough and, and people can 100% identify it and if they've seen you in the community of that artist's work and you're doing this, you know what I mean? Like I don't know how the wars... <laughs> I, I don't understand. Because like if I ever did, I gave full on credit to whomever I got the idea from because I'm not going to get caught lying about that. It ain't mine if I, you know what I mean? I will make sure that you know this isn't my work, you know? This is me reviewing somebody else. But like to get upset over little things like somebody taking a color scheme, no, I, I don't agree with that. I think you should have some freaking confidence to know that if somebody took your colors, they're not stealing your art. Because like that's the, the biggest thing is that we get so stuck on how we are, or what we did, or what we haven't done, or what we've learned so far, or you know, how somebody else is so much better than us. And I, th I think a lot of those people, the reason that they attacked so hard is because they see promise. Of, like, if it's not that that other artist is like really freaking good, they see promise in how they're growing as an artist. And if they go and copy anything of yours, 
you now feel threatened that there's a better artist than you. And I think that goes back to my one of my beginning topics to where it's like you get so stuck on comparing yourself to other artists that you don't have enough self-esteem in yourself that helps you to know that your art that your art is worth it and it's you know what i mean it's not the <laughs> when you have confidence it's not the end of the world if another person is inspired by you because you should feel honored that somebody felt inspired by your work and that somebody wanted to recreate it in their style because that means that you've hit a whole different level compared to what you used to be at. If it's not blatant art theft, which is a whole different thing, but like with when it's as little as something like a color scheme, really, you really need to work on yourself, sweetie. I get that point. You really need to work on yourself. I don't want to say original works because they are, the concept is very original, but the style can be very easily mimicked. If you look at too many of the same types of images, you might get confused on who the artists are. You know what I mean? And I personally think with art, it doesn't need to be completely different. But like, if you have things that you like, like I found after years, I did anywhere from anime in the beginning, and then I ended up getting a little bit back on that just because Pokemon stuff. Hyper realism. Now, people did it way better than me, so mine probably goes more in realism, but to me it's hyper-realistic in comparison to what I used to do with realistic drawings and a lot of comic book style art in the past, right? And now I, I decided to take a step back and when I figured out what I liked out of art, I was able to develop a style. And that was not with... There was a little bit of watching certain artists and how they did theirs, but for the most part it was all just whatever I felt like doing with it. So like I looked at my art and I'm like, okay, you know, I'm kind of over at this point in my life doing just pencil sketches. I wanted to do more, but I hated inking traditional sketches. So that's why I never really did as much comic work as what I wanted to do when I was younger and I'm also awful at... <laughs> I used to love to role play in high school on video games and stuff like that so I was good as a storyteller when there was other people involved but a storyteller on my own I just couldn't do but at the same time I couldn't force myself to draw somebody else's ideas which is also part of the reason why I didn't fully get into commission works because I wanted to make my own original art and go from there and then if somebody wanted something from me I would get kind of tired of it because it's like half of their ideas weren't anything that was like mentally stimulating to me. I look back on it and I'm like, okay, I like thick outlines, which is a thing that's frowned upon in the art world. Um, so petty on certain things, like having thick line work or not using proper color theory or um, not taking the time to s draw freaking perspectives and studies and stuff like that. And I, I don't think you, I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, you need to know some of that stuff when you're making junk, but like, at the end of the day, we still have like, Picassos, you know what I mean? And like, unfortunately, abstract work's making like a real big comeback, <laughs> and I don't know why. It's not my thing, and like, other people, you know, we've gotten to, it's simpler, but the process is harder like acrylic pour paints and stuff like that and it's neat it's really cool on what people can do with it but there's no need to be original with it you know what i mean you, you pick the colors you want you, you you add all the mediums that you want you add a little bit of fire and stuff and voila you have a you have an art piece and as cool as that is it's not really contributing you know what i mean but that's the beauty of it it's its own freaking thing and it doesn't have the same rules as what other art does so like and by contributing, I'm meaning it's not falling into the same categories as what people always put with art. So, like, to me, it, and this falls with schooling, tutorials, people with Patreons and stuff like that, it's like, you're given this, these free tips, right, on how to do stuff and how not to do stuff, and, like, all this stuff that it's really not necessary. You know what I mean? Like, okay, fine. You need to learn how to do perspective because if you want it to actually make sense and it to translate like how you have in your mind, 
then yeah, look up some reference images. Look up apps that, you know, allow you to do 3D models and put it in the positions that you need if you can't fully do it yourself. I don't care. That's fine. You know what I mean? It's helpful. Learning that kind of stuff will actually help it translate, unless that's not your style. And don't let anybody make you feel negative or feel bad about yourself because it's not your style. Like with mine, I don't know a lick about perspective or color theory or basic fundamentals because I didn't care. <laughs> I just did. You know what I mean? And most of the time, the best stuff that we do just comes from doing it. It doesn't always need to be a freaking lesson and that. And I'm seeing like a lot of, that's what started this whole conversation. Cause this is just turning into a drug out ramp. Cause I really didn't organize it properly. But like my biggest thing is that I'm seeing like videos right now and it's, it's from one specific person. Cause they keep popping up on my for you page and it's like, they're not bad, but like at the same time, it's like, they're talking about how color theories you need to learn color theories and there's like certain ones and the one that they hated the most is the one that I use because I use the full color wheel um, and like I learning how to properly do your colors and stuff and I'm like okay well you know I didn't learn I didn't learn a thing about that you know what I did I looked at the colors and I'm like do I like these colors together yes yes I did so therefore I put it you know, there were certain little things that I needed to learn, like, you know, certain colors that don't blend into other colors, but then I'm like, do I really use gradients? No, not in the, not in the traditional sense. I use it as filters over it, which it picks for me <laughs> and I don't have to, you know what I mean? So it's not like it's a, it's not like it's a, a thing. And I hate schooling for that reason because it's it's a very rare day that you'll actually find a teacher that understands the freedom of expression in comparison to teaching you how to be a master. And that's the thing. Like, I, I consider myself a jack of all trades and a master of none and I'm okay with that because I don't want to be. You know what I mean? By the end of the day, if I want to do a hyper-realistic picture one day, I will do it. If I want to do an anime picture that you know, other day, okay, fine, you know, I'll do that too. If I want to go and make my own original artwork that's based out of the style that I created, I'm gonna do that. You know what I mean? If I want to try out a different style, I'll give that a shot. If I want to, you know, be the neon Bob Ross, I'm gonna go do that because that's what I feel like doing. I don't need to... And I think that's where, like, his was nice. Because, like, Bob Ross was, wasn't was really in this same issue when he taught you how to paint. It's like, okay, today we're going to do this landscape. But however yours came out, it was your art. It was perfect the way that it was. It didn't need to be changed. It was fine. You follow his things if you want. You do your own thing. You know, I made this piece. And this was my take on a Bob Ross piece. And I freaking love this thing. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Do I know how to draw a tree? Absolutely not. Does it make sense? Definitely not, but it's still what I like. It's still the art that I enjoy, you know, and, and I, that's the biggest thing. I'm stuck. <laughs> and I think that's where like a lot of these are taking that out of it. Now, I'm not saying that there's not people that love the academic learning of properly learning, you know, the ways of the old masters or, you know, these new masters that are on the internet, whatever. And that's great. And if you're going to learn how to draw like them, that's fine. But at least specify that you're going to be learning my take on it. This is what I do. This is what I learned. And this is what I'm teaching. If you want to be like me, not in the, you need to do this. You have to draw this way. You have to paint this way. You know, you have to learn these things. You know what I mean? Because like, if you're recreating stuff, you know what I mean? Like most people, they're like, yeah, you need to learn how to draw still life. Most of the time when you're drawing, for like the most part, not all of it, you're going to be like, yeah, I got this image in my head, so let me just do that. You don't need to like, I'm not one that likes to draw still life or landscapes. And you know, I'm sure I could change that if I really cared to. And like most people, you know, you're going to be out trying to recreate it. And I think that's the beauty of it. It can get frustrating if you don't know basic stuff, which it's like, okay, that's fair. You know what I mean? Color theory when you're painting and you need to like color pick. Totally understand that you need to learn how to do that. Um, would have helped me a long time ago. <laughs> I was trying to paint realistic stuff and it just never worked. Um, but like now I do like neon colors. So it's like, what do I want their skin to look like? Okay. Greens. I like green. That mixes well with yellow. 
all right add a little bit of white for a highlight sweet we're good you know what i mean so it's like i don't know there's more of a freedom to it if you're not trying to box yourself in is my thing and i feel like <sighs> schooling causes that comparison definitely cult is is like the worst creative killer ever and having to force yourself on stuff you know what i mean and it's like yeah you can be you can become a master at anything but do i want to copy people no i don't want to be like other artists i want to have my own thing you know where you look at my stuff and you know oh yeah you know she made that that's schmoo yeah she did that you know schmooples made that where you know you can you can be like oh snap you know i know that artist and whatever instead of being like you know that looks like every other freaking artist that i've seen you know it's like when you walk into a a museum you know and you're not educated on which artists did what you know you can't tell me that you're not like you know you can kind of see the difference and i'm not talking like van gogh and picasso i'm talking about like classic art you know what i mean like medieval to the or not medieval sorry the renaissance period kind of art and stuff like that where you know like there's a few of them like i i, I can't remember any other freaking name michelangelo wasn't the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles like a whole bunch of artists? <laughs> Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, Michelangelo. Yeah, aren't they all artists? I can't freaking remember. It's sad that I had to go off of freaking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles just to answer that. Anyway, but like you have a whole bunch of them, but like, you know, at first glance, you're not going to probably think much about it you know it's you have to really analyze it in order to with some of them to know you know and i love watching like art restorers and stuff like that but when they discuss the artists and stuff like that on on who it is and the different works that they did i would not be able to tell the difference firsthand without over analyzing the whole piece to tell that it wasn't the same person because when you paint a face you paint a face and you have the art genre which it's like all the women look the same <laughs> beautiful but like they all look the same you know what i mean and most of them are all based off of the same muse so honestly if you saw a different picture with a different muse you probably still think it's the same artist because of the same blending scheme and the same everything else unless you looked at it and i don't like that <laughs> i want to be able to look at somebody's art and know and be like you know what yeah so like some of my favorite artists are street artists so like when you look at crap even banksy I'm not like a huge fan, but you know, whatever you can look at that guy's art and you're like, yeah Yeah, you could there's there's a different vibe to it. You know what I mean? Ten Hun Ten Hundred is one of my favorite artists and that on YouTube and I have gotten some pieces I actually have a piece up on my door or behind my door and love it. I think it's awesome, you know, and his art it's like a muted neon and that's what got me into the whole neon thing because i'm like man i'm really drawn to this dude's art but i don't know why <laughs> many conversations with my mother and uh, on on discussing you know what my personality is actually like instead of the weird little bubble that i put my own self into i was able to actually work out what i liked and he's got thick outlines and he's got you know fun colors and really expressive stuff and whatever and i love that i love expressive art i love drawing weird expressions that most people find unattractive. I love bright colors that just make you feel like a kid again. You know what I mean? And it might give some people a headache and I apologize for that, but I'm not changing it. But like just fun stuff, you know? And I want kids to be able to look at it and, and adults to be able to look at it and at least get a laugh out of it if nothing else. Where it's just, it brightens your day, it makes you giggle and it's just fun to look at and having it up would be you know, a plus and whatever. I say is I have none of it up right now. <laughs> but like, I think that's awesome. You know what I mean? And and then you got some other ones like um, Kipto. Like he uses the same color screen. Screams? Color screams? Uh, color schemes like blue and red. That's his thing, you know? And like real painterly lines throughout his work. And then you've got other people like Shlu. He he kind of like he kind of fits the same category as Ten Hun, where it's got you know bold outlines if he's doing that, and then it's got it's got a lot of vibrant colors and it's oil paint, I believe, and that's pretty cool, you know, like either spray paint or oil paint. And he's got one where it's the Cyclops, and it's fun because it's like the gradients are disconnected. It's not blended in. It's like a comic book shadow almost. I think that's awesome. But like you could look at all of these dudes' works and you'd be like. 
okay, yeah, that's all individual stuff. That's not just... And that's what I love about... He does these... Uh, Ten Hun does these things where he sends out canvases. And dude, would I freaking love to be able to join this collaboration someday. Honest to goodness. Where he does a... He sends out a canvas and all these different artists get to do it. And then you get to send it to another artist. And it's this never-ending art collab. And I think that's one of the coolest ideas and he also sends it to people who send it to other people that I it's interesting because you get to see all the different styles that these people have and whatever and the first art collab which I'll show a picture came out so freaking cool and everybody's work looks so different and they had um I mean is it that one I can't remember I think I think it's the first art collab that had um even uh, Crayola uh he's an awesome artist he does these really expressive oil paintings of different characters from like old timey books and and like just the like old vintage stuff in general but he he combines it to where somehow even though it's a real muted color it just looks so fun to like it's just so fun to look at and honestly i would have one of his pieces just right up in my dining room you know what i mean because it's just it's just so cute it's, it's got cute stuff it's got weird stuff it's got that vibe that i love so much of surrealism and he just does an excellent job with it but yeah like you know i just think that's cool and like it's just a, it's a side goal to be able to maybe do something like that someday or or even do my own collaboration with people um i don't mind i don't think he'd mind me taking the idea but uh because I think he would just be more excited to know that it was inspirational enough to do it and that. But like I don't, I don't actually know. A whole, I'm not actually connected with like a whole bunch of artists. But someday, someday I might be. Anyway, this is a really long video that I'm gonna have to edit, and uh, I think I'll probably end it here. And that was more of a rant than anything, so I'm just gonna call it a rant. And then you can't complain at me about it not being edited well and me being all over the place with my topics. So if you want me to talk about specific topics in detail on their own videos, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I will maybe do it. I don't really know. I'm going to be uploading some more art videos because I'm in the process of a few pieces right now. Yeah, that's about all I have to say. So I will see you in the next video. So God bless, stay awesome, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.